Okay, so I've taken him and put him on his wall habitat and mounted him to the stand. Then I shot a screw underneath to hold him on so he's not falling all over the place as I sew him up. But I am gonna take, and I need to take some clay and start working it and packing this here crease all the way around and getting it all smoothed out. All right, I'm gonna need two hands. I'm gonna have to hold it from shaking. All right, and I'm gonna do that. Okay, filled it in with clay and I went all the way around it. All right, now I'm gonna start sewing. Actually, I'm gonna go from here to the base of the back and then we'll work on the tail next. Okay, this is the needle that I'm using. It is a three-sided needle. That way it cuts through and you're not struggling trying to pop it through or use a needle nose pliers. I use a waxed cape thread and I just put it through, fold it over, pull it through, and tie me one single knot at the end. Then I will take and start with my first hole, pull it through, and then go like this right here. Stick it through like that, and then pull it, and tighten down on it, and that'll hold me into position. And I'm just gonna go back and forth, back and forth with the traditional baseball stitch. All right, here I go. Well, I'll be back in a few minutes. Takes a few minutes to sew. If you don't like to sew, you might not like to do taxidermy. Uh, I should have mentioned this to you. So the reason why I started the head and go to the tail is if you start at the tail coming up to the head, you're going to end up possibly with a mohawk from when you're sewing and pulling, sewing and pulling, causing those hairs to stand up. When you go from the head to the tail, you're sewing and pulling and it's going in the natural direction it needs to be. All right, so I got it sewed up. You can see very minimal of a ridge. And when it fluffs up, that's gonna disappear. That's what you wanna get. You wanna try to keep minimal of like a mohawk. All right, now I'm gonna start working on the tail. All right, so obviously we're looking at it from the rear section because that right there is the old, y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, so as you can see, there's like an indention hole. We're gonna have to pack that with clay and that's where our rod's gonna go. And then you're gonna have to make a mound of clay on the outside on the form to replace all the tissue that was removed from around the rear there. And we're gonna have to sew it up. But we're gonna have to take and start at the end of the tail and sew it all the way up with the rod inserted in it. And then get it into there and then start packing our clay around. All right, I'm gonna try to show you the best I can. Okay, so actually I've already started about two inches up the tail. Then you can insert your rod and work your way up, or you could stitch it even further and then insert your rod. And I'm gonna show you something else too. So you're probably gonna be doing it. And you're gonna keep pulling and getting the hair tangled up. So after, let's reverse a little bit. So after I take the needle and I come through the skin right there, I'll hold it up and I'll pull it, keeping it out of that hair, or slide that string between your fingers, keeping it out of the hair. And that'll help to keep it out. And then, boom. See, and then when I'm coming up, I'm at an angle a little bit. And I'll take it, lift it up, Get the hair out of the way. Slide it between the fingers there. And pull it. Keeping the hair out of the stitching. Now it's going to be underneath. You won't see it as much. So if there's a flaw, like I always say, it'll be all right. All right, I'm going to continue on. Okay, so I'll take this clay. 
slip it on in there and push it down in here now, put some more and then when you slide the metal rod through it actually go right through that clay with no problem filling it in all right I'm gonna insert some more and do the same thing all the way up all right so I got that there filled in with the clay and then I'm gonna take this piece which is like a cup mound and that's going to go right there rebuilding that muscle tissue in that area because it's kind of cut off when they made the form and i may need to add a little bit more and then i'm going to slide the rod and connect it and then i'll take and stitch this up and when you get done with your stitching it together then push it into the clay tuck it into the clay then squish the clay pinching and holding it from coming back out as much all right well i'm gonna do that all right guys so i got it up here and it's right about at the height that's probably going to be in the shop that it's going to at my deer processors it may be a little higher so i want it up here to do its head and the eyes and everything at the height that it's going to be i don't want to do it down here on the stand and you hang it up on the wall and it's off now what i did do not looking at the head but i ran around the body tucked it everything in then i took the feet pushed up on them did a little work a little adjustment and trying to put them into the position that they would be naturally hanging down if the raccoon was up there in real life hanging off of a limb got the tail fall where i think it should be now once i start taking and fluffing him up oh man the magic's going to start happening all right well now i'm going to start working on his face all right well got him up here i'm gonna start fluffing on him now the I tuck the lips in and I over tuck them working on the nose and then tomorrow I'll take or the next day start doing some epoxy and that'll help hold those eyes and then I'll really start to shape them you cannot finish it the same day you mount it the cape is really wet it's just gonna slip and slide all over the place so you just kind of get things into position and as it's drying you work it it's a little different than doing a deer you don't have all that skin to be able to tuck and like i said i'm going to use an epoxy and tuck it in like tomorrow or the next day and that's going to lock it in and hold it and then keep working with the nose and shaping it as it's drying so in the end in about a week's time it's going to look a lot better all right well let me get back to working on it and fluffing it up a little bit all right guys here we go so i got him all fluffed up he's sitting up here on his perch and i'll leave him to dry for a few days i'll keep coming out here and as i'm doing my other stuff i'll keep adjusting and tending to him and things will move as they're drying so i'll keep repositioning them leave things hanging like they're supposed to like they're relaxed and he's just up there Taking it easy, just looking down at the ground. Don't have to worry about paying bills and life's demands that we all got to deal with. <laughs> all right. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'll just keep adjusting everything. I'll mess with the nose and the eyes tomorrow and the next day. There, it, things are wet right now. It's a wet tan. You'll end up fighting it. And see, see these here? It's whiskers. I'm able to turn them out like I needed to. And then push it into the clay line up your hair patterns I'll still mess with it some more tomorrow keep your hair patterns lined up and I'll just keep working with it and repositioning them and get everything like it needs to be and then do a little bit of airbrushing and he'll be ready to go like I said there's an eye protector you see on there I'll take that off after I do the airbrushing all right guys well there you go I'll show you a final result here like in the next few days all right guys there you go i've showed you how to mount a full body raccoon with some alterations 
if you take and watch my videos from the beginning all the way to the end and follow my instructions, it's going to help you out to do your own raccoon. I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube over the years, and I think I brought y'all a pretty good detailed instructional how to mount your own raccoon video. All right, well, do me a big favor. If you've made it this far and you're liking this content, hit that thumbs up. Let me know so I know that y'all are liking the content. Feel free to reach out to me in the comment section if you need to. That's what I'm here for, to help you out to the best of my ability that I can. Thanks for watching. Like always, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be bringing y'all another video here in the next few days. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.